everyone, this is Rubul. Today I'm going to be talking about taxes, specifically the Schedule C form. This is a common form that musicians and performing artists need to know well, because it is where we put all of our information as a business owner. And you may not consider yourself as a business owner since you are a musician or a performing artist, but the IRS does as long as you earn $600 outside of traditional employee job. So this could be through teaching, festivals, gigs, performances, anywhere where you are an independent contractor, that is gonna get added up here on this Schedule C form. And more importantly, this is the form where we get to total of all of our deductions as a business. And we all know that the more deductions we have, the lower our taxable income and ultimately our tax. So I'm just gonna talk through five important things to know about your Schedule C. Let's get started. First and foremost, most musicians and performing artists are business owners. As I mentioned earlier, as long as you're earning $600 or more in a calendar year, you will fall into this category. And sole proprietor is the first level of business that you would be into. As a business owner, there are a few benefits. One of them being we get to take business deductions on our tax return. This form is all about calculating your profit or loss. The whole purpose of this form is to get to one number and to understand whether or not as a business you made a profit or a loss. How it does that is through a simple calculation. It adds up all of your income. This is total worldwide income. What you've earned as a musician, performing, teaching, all of that. Could be in multiple states, it doesn't matter how you received it all of that income gets added up into a total income. Next, it adds up all of your expenses. You want to check out my other video on what you can and can't deduct so you can make sure you're including the right items here. It takes that total income minus that total expense and gives a result. Whether that was positive or negative will let you know if you had a profit or loss. The IRS has already predetermined a list of expense categories. This is in part two. And here you can see from advertising all the way down to other expenses that they have listed out what common expenses they're expecting to see from most business owners. You should be going through this list and then making sure that your expenses are either fitting into this category and that they are following the rules for what you can and can't deduct. In addition, there are three expenses you wanna pay special attention to. First, car and truck expenses. This is vehicle expenses and there's actually a separate section, part four, in this form that talks a little bit more about what the IRS is looking for in order to provide supporting evidence to your vehicle deduction. There's contract labor, which is anytime you're paying an accompanist, somebody to you know, perform work for you, staff, anytime you're paying somebody to do something for you, this is not private teaching. But when they're performing work for you, this is contract labor. You wanna add all of that up. And if you do happen to pay an individual more than $600 in that calendar year, then they are going to need a 1099 themselves. And the third thing that I wanted to point out is home expense. And this is a separate section on the form right below the list of all the IRS categories. The IRS wants to know and make sure that you're calculating your home expense accurately. The final thing I want to point out in the Schedule C form is this other expenses line. So the IRS has listed all the categories that they think are common, but they recognize that that's not all inclusive. So in part five of this form, you're allowed to itemize additional expenses that are unique and you know specific for your musician business. Here's where you might put something like education and training if you're taking private lessons or you're doing professional you know, skills development through a course like Invested Musician, for example. You may also have something like research and development. If you're an orchestral musician and you went to a concert, an orchestral concert, that that would be a justifiable deduction as well. So here you can lay out some specific additional expenses that total would then get rolled up into that table in part two. And again, the whole purpose of this form is taking that total income, subtracting the total expenses and resulting in a profit or loss. Again, this is so important because what we report here on profit or loss gets rolled into our personal tax form, and then that is used to help determine how much tax we're going to pay. The more deductions we have, the lower our profit and the lower our tax liability. So I hope you found this video useful. For other great financial tips and also ways to push your musical career forward, 
please check out the Invested Musician channel. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.